Hey everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those videos. We have some rumors for you today. Obviously these rumors require a lot of salt. So we got our tinfoil hat out. We'll probably be taking it off. We actually talk about the rumors, but I want this to be remembered here because folks, I'm not saying that you should believe anything that I'm about to talk about, except for the following. Give away three copies of this bad boy. See this, this is Metroid Dread. We're giving away three copies of this for Dreadtober. <laughs> so uh, yeah, to win two of the copies, you need to go down to the description or our pinned comment and click on the viral sweep link. Uh, there will be a bunch of different ways to enter there, including subscribing to the channel. Our third copy will be given away on a live stream at the end of the month, which to win that one, again, you just gotta be subscribed and then show up to that stream. Stream is not set up yet, so for now the viral sweep link will work fine, and we'll catch you guys here on the other side of our intro. All right, folks, we got two rumors we're going to be talking about in this video for this lovely weekend. We actually haven't had a good old juicy rumor report in quite some time. We did technically have a Nate the Hate podcast stuff on a potential new Switch, but besides that, we haven't had a lot else. And we do have some more news on Nintendo's future or potential future anyways of the next Switch or next Nintendo system. But we also have a new Zelda rumor which, I mean, is more interesting to me than it is necessarily having a lot of meaning. But anytime we get Zelda rumors that might be real or might not be real, I feel like we need to talk about it, especially when it comes to a game that we're really looking forward to in Breath of the Wild 2. So, let's get to our first rumor. This one comes from Nick from Xbox Era Podcast. Now, if that name doesn't sound familiar, or if it does sound familiar, I don't blame you. If it doesn't sound familiar, it's because it's an Xbox guy, so we don't really talk about him here much. If it does sound familiar, you'll remember that Nick was one of the people jumping on the Zelda 35th bandwagon before E3 this year, and obviously all that stuff for the Zelda 35th anniversary was just fake news besides, obviously, the Game & Watch that has yet to come out. So, yeah, um, I don't blame anyone for not wanting to listen to this person. Um, yeah, they're not exactly on my most trustworthy list. Nick does tend to get a lot right when it comes to rumors for the Xbox. So I think he's got some sort of connections in the industry. I just don't know how real these connections are for Nintendo. Kind of feel like if he had a lot of legit Nintendo connections, he would be doing Nintendo content, not just Xbox. But that being said, I'm at least gonna look at what he's saying in context with other rumors and we'll go from there. So he said that Nintendo is, is working on a revision slash successor that depends on the marketing have you know pinch me if you've heard that one before because that's exactly what nate the hate said so okay cool uh, but then he goes on to say something in addition nintendo is sincerely considering that the next revision or possible successor to switch will be digital only however it's entirely possible that this information is actually referring to a new generation two system swap aka a new gen switch or new gen nintendo platform where one of them is physical and the other one is a lighter version that's digital only now he said that he has heard this from his sources whether or not this comes to be anything i don't know i will say that i am not as upset by the later half of this idea because yeah having a physical switch obviously we don't want to get rid of physical games and i think physical sales are too big for Nintendo to abandon them entirely. So if there's a whole new generation launch, this would mean a swap of say the current Switch OLED and OG Switch for a more powerful um, you know, version of Switch that takes physical carts. And then obviously you would replace the Switch Lite with hopefully an OLED panel Switch Lite, that would be great. And then the Switch Lite would end up being uh, Switch Lite Plus, Switch Lite 2, whatever, would end up being digital only. This would be following a similar pattern to the PlayStation and Xbox, which is also one reason to not believe it because Nintendo doesn't typically follow the pattern of their competitors. However, it does technically line up with the way Nintendo does things. It would make a new digital only model would actually be cheaper to manufacture because you wouldn't have to have the cartridge reader slot in there. However, then you would think they would need to encourage more internal memory 
Now, it's possible the next Switch or next gen, whatever Nintendo thing, was going to have 128 gigs or more in it anyways. Uh, but if they were going to stick with 64 uh, or 32, that would be rather discouraging um, unless they're going to pack at least a 64 gig micro SD card in with it. Even then, I, that's not enough storage for a digital only platform. So this is just something to kind of consider that it's a possibility that's out there. So if we hear about a next gen Nintendo Switch next year, the year after, the year after that, whenever we find out what Nintendo's doing next, if there does, if there is basically a cheaper digital only version and a more expensive physical version that allows cartridges, just remember this is the first time we've heard about it. So let's give Nick credit. But again, I'm not really sure what to believe with this one, okay? Um, we can combine it with all the other rumors out there and some people are sick of even talking about this stuff. Um, I'm always interested in what's coming next, so it is something I'll always cover at my channel. But again, rumor, 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 or rumor, 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 rumor. All right, this next batch comes from, uh, it's about Breath of the Wild 2. And obviously anything Breath of the Wild 2 is very, very interesting, even if I don't think that this adds anything of, of value, but it does look a little bit behind the development process, which is, I guess, one reason why I'm willing to talk about it, because it's not necessarily going to get your hopes, like, flying through the roof. But... Well, maybe it will. How do I know? How do I know how you're going to react? All right, so here's the thing. These rumors come from Game Over Jesse, and we need to have a conversation about Game Over Jesse first because a lot of you will automatically dismiss this stuff, and I don't blame you. Game Over Jesse is a friend of mine, of course, uh, and he does appear on our podcast time to time. But yeah, he obviously was wrong on a whole bunch of stuff for the Zelda 35th anniversary. Of course, he always labeled them as rumors himself. He never said they were actually happening. But here's the big thing I want to note about him. And this is to his credit. When he gets all these rumors and stuff from various places, he separates them into categories and he separates them into who is giving him what information. So for the most part, a lot of the people that gave him all the false information have landed on the shit tier list. The people that are actually giving him information that has since come true with Skyward Sword HD, Ocarina of Time for the N64 coming to Switch, all this kind of stuff. Um, those people he puts in the, yeah, somewhat believable category. And the person he heard this information from comes from that camp. And it actually, everything they've said so far to him has technically come true from the Game & Watch, the Ocarina of Time on, for the N64 on Switch, to Skyward Sword HD. He got all of this stuff correct before it was announced. So, it is what it is. This is what he's putting out there. Still be super, super skeptical. Also, even if this isn't true, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> but we're still going to talk about it. So, according to this person, uh, Breath of the Wild localization basically was done a few months ago. Um, but and, and a lot of the localizers for the team moved on. We actually talked about this story earlier this summer where it felt like even most of the recording of the voices potentially was done. So that would really suggest hey, the game's probably coming within the next year, at least from when they were showing at E3. So that was pretty cool. Um, but it appears that Nintendo of Japan, in particular AJ Anomu, was not happy with some of these localization efforts when they finally reviewed it back in Japan. Because they don't review it, obviously, instantly while they're still working on the game, but it has to get all approved. Um, so Nintendo um, apparently has been hiring more and more localizers and translators uh, for Breath of the Wild all over again to rewrite entire parts of the game, uh, including cutscenes and one particular book that you can find in the game and read that deals a lot with the history of Hyrule. So, yeah, there's um, some stuff that they just weren't happy about. Um, and uh, like even some of the cutscenes have had to be completely rewritten, which a lot of the cutscenes have voiceover work. So they have to obviously, if they rewrite that, they have to get the voice actors back into re-record lines. By the way, none of this should actually lead to a delay in Breath of the Wild 2 because the core team in Japan hasn't been held back. This would just be additional teams like Nintendo of Europe, or the UK, Canada, United States, etc., etc., all over the world having to get different localizers uh, going. But um, it is just interesting to see that sometimes there is some disconnect between the original writings in Japanese versus elsewhere. This also suggests there's obviously a lot of text to translate in this game, which shouldn't be surprising i think a lot of people are expecting breath of the wild 2 to have a deeper darker more dense story because in the last game we were working without memories so there was a lot of let's just try to remember what we need to to beat the bad guy well this time the memories are back 
we were walking off into the sunset with Zelda off to do something, we clearly are going to have to have a lot more dialogue and a lot more story in this game in a traditional sense. So I'll have to wait and see if it could hold up to maybe some of the deeper stories out there in the Zelda franchise like Skyward Sword. If you guys played Skyward Sword HD, you now know it's one of the most story, you know, in-depth games in the Zelda franchise. But five hours of cutscenes, in there, that's like two full-length movies inside Skyward Sword. It's insane. So um, you guys let me know what you think about this rumor and the prior one down in the description. Be sure to enter to win Metroid Dread. Uh, might have another video, small video popping off later today to let you guys know about something happening next weekend. Um, otherwise, you guys are amazing. Thank you for all of your support. Uh, just your view and your like of these videos and comments is just enough to make me smile. I hope you guys are having a lovely weekend. And remember, all of you matter and take care of yourselves. I'll catch you in the next video.